Today's video is sponsored by The Daily Upside, a totally free, high-quality daily business and finance newsletter. Visit the link in the description to learn more. One of the biggest economic worries in Europe around sanctioning Russia in response to the invasion of Ukraine is that Russia could cut off Europe's natural gas supplies. The EU relies on Russia for a significant percentage of its energy needs, and there are no easy substitutes for Russian oil and gas supplies if they are disrupted. So Russia is in a strong position, but they do still need to sell to Europe. Russian oil and gas export revenues made up roughly 43% of the Kremlin's federal budget between 2011 and 2020. This is revenue that they can't afford to lose. They currently get $440 million per day from gas sales to Europe and have no easy way of rerouting this gas to other markets due to the way the pipelines are set up. So both Europe and Russia are extremely economically reliant on each other. Austria and Germany in particular rely very heavily on Russia for natural gas. Turning off the taps for even a few days would cause havoc for these economies, but doing this would inflict much greater economic damage on Russia, as right now oil and gas exports make up almost the entire Russian economy. Germany and Austria do have emergency plans in place to deal with such a situation, and they are already in the early warning phase, the first of three steps designed to prepare the country for a supply shortage. In the final stage, the governments would bring in gas rationing. Earlier this week, I'm sure you heard Vladimir Putin announced a decree that unfriendly foreign countries must start paying for natural gas supplies in rubles, otherwise they'll be cut off. The way this new decree works is that buyers in countries deemed hostile to Russia, which are basically all of the countries imposing economic sanctions on them, I guess he could probably view Ukrainians as a bit hostile too, these countries are required to open an account both in foreign currency and in rubles at Gazprom Bank, which has not yet been sanctioned by the US and the EU because it facilitates the sale of Russian oil and gas. These countries would then transfer euros or US dollars into these accounts. Gazprom Bank would convert these into rubles, which would then be used to make the payments for natural gas. Though Putin's order comes into effect for gas exported from today onwards, the way these contracts work is that payments for the gas being delivered right now are not due until mid-May. This means that there should not be an immediate threat to energy supplies in Europe. A lot of analysts are predicting that this plan is likely to be extended to include exports of oil, grain, fertilizers, coal, metals and other key commodities too. The UK would not be directly impacted by natural gas supply disruptions as it imports less than 5% of its gas from Russia and the UK is actually already sanctioning Gazprom Bank. But of course the UK would be affected by prices rising in the global markets as the availability of natural gas falls. This push by Russia is being seen as an attempt to boost the ruble, which was hit hard by Western sanctions that were put in place last month. Putin says that the switch to rubles will strengthen Russian sovereignty and that Russia will stick to its obligations on all contracts if Western nations oblige. Okay, so what is going on with the ruble then? Well, back in early March, the ruble lost almost half its value in less than two weeks after American and European sanctions kicked in. Since then, though, the currency has recovered, and on Thursday it traded at 81.7 to the dollar, back to where it was before Putin invaded Ukraine. At first this might look impressive, and that's because it's designed to, as keeping the exchange rate strong is part of a political effort to make it look like the sanctions aren't having any effect. The currency is holding up for a variety of reasons, mostly tied to the draconian capital controls imposed by Moscow. When the sanctions were first imposed, the ruble fell sharply as many Russians were moving their money abroad. Then capital controls were quickly imposed, preventing Russians from getting their money out of the country. The central bank additionally more than doubled interest rates to 20%, incentivizing people to hold on to their rubles. 
These measures stopped bank runs and kept the Russian banking system functional. Additionally, foreigners have been prevented from selling Russian stocks, meaning that their investment money is trapped in Russia too. Russia has forced all exporters to convert 80% of their revenues into rubles, which they would not naturally have done. Right now, banks outside of Russia have essentially stopped quoting dollar-ruble exchange rates. So when you see that the exchange rate has recovered, it's only done so because anyone who wants to transact is prevented from doing so. This apparent strength in the ruble is masking the damage that sanctions are doing to the Russian economy. Analysts estimate that Russia's economic output will drop by 15% this year, wiping out 15 years of growth as domestic demand collapses. This is the contraction that's expected with Russia continuing to export oil and gas. As of right now, more than 400 foreign companies have already withdrawn from Russia, many of them self-sanctioning by quitting the country even if sanctions don't require them to do so. Now, before I go any further, let me quickly tell you about today's video sponsor, The Daily Upside. If you're struggling to find useful and unbiased financial and business news, The Daily Upside might be the solution to your problem. The Daily Upside is a totally free daily email newsletter written by a team of financial professionals with real industry experience. It's become the first thing I read every morning, as it's informative, entertaining, and not dumbed down. They give you the most important news with real analysis. They had a great piece on this very topic yesterday that was helpful in making today's video. Whether you're a financial professional or just looking for a great source of business news, The Daily Upside will help. It's totally free to sign up and they send you one information-filled email every morning. I can't recommend it enough. Sign up using the link in the description below. Okay, so why does Russia want to be paid in rubles then, and will being paid in rubles make any difference? Well, the fact that Russia is able to sell natural gas to Europe is the biggest hole in the Western sanctions right now, and this hole already severely undermines the overall effect. Right now, European companies buy gas from Russia in euros or in dollars, at which point Russia forces the exporters to convert 80% of their revenues into rubles. Under Putin's new plan, all the money gets converted first, and then the exporters get paid in rubles. The big difference here is simply who does the currency conversion. Whether the West pays for Russian gas in euros or in rubles, Moscow still receives foreign currency, which can then be used for buying imports or for propping up the ruble. So right now, the main reason Putin is making these demands is political. Putin wants to look strong to the people of Russia and wants to appear to be pushing back against Western sanctions. He possibly hopes that other countries that dislike the US or the EU might join in and keep more of their funds in currencies of more geopolitically aligned countries. While that might be his goal, it's not obvious what currencies could easily replace the dollar and the euro in the global financial system. It would not be the Chinese yuan due to their capital controls, which mean that currency can't be moved freely in and out of China. Additionally, China's bond market is too illiquid right now. If you're in the process of typing a comment saying that it'll be Bitcoin, there's no need to even finish your comment because the laser eyes in your profile photo communicate your opinion far better than anything that you could write. Now, one other reason that Putin might want to push for being paid in rubles is he may be worried about further sanctions being placed on Russia, similar to those on Iran. Some supporters of Ukraine are suggesting that buyers should have to pay money into escrow accounts from which Moscow could withdraw funds only to pay for certain essentials. Putin's decree may have been in part an attempt to insulate Russia from such a move, but it's not obvious that that would even help should such uh, conditions be applied. Okay, so what do the existing supply contracts look like? 
Well, under the existing contracts, Gazprom is entitled to renegotiate the terms of its contracts every three years. And they have dozens of different contracts with different suppliers. So a change like this would be a long process. If there was a dispute about existing contracts, it would typically be settled by arbitration in Stockholm. And under the terms of the contracts, the gas would be required to continue flowing while the dispute is being settled. Now, Russia could, of course, just decide to tear up the contracts, but doing so would be in breach of international protocols. And this is not something that Russia appears to want to do at the moment. Russia honored their supply contracts even at the heights of the Cold War, and it would appear that Russia does not wish to be seen as a pariah state like North Korea quite yet. This is likely why they also made their bond payments last month, when a lot of people did not expect them to do so. Ultimately, Russia still needs the money for the gas and still wants to leave the possibility of a market for its main export once a peace deal is signed. Germany has said that it's prepared to ration energy supplies rather than pay for gas in rubles. Doing this would plunge Germany, which is the EU's largest economy, into recession. But it would do much more harm to Russia overall. Cutting off Europe would mean lost revenues for Gazprom, which is majority owned by the Russian state. It would also speed up Europe's move away from buying Russian commodities in the long run, adding to the country's already dramatic economic decline. So while it might not be wise, in theory Russia could actually just cut Europe off almost immediately, without much operational difficulty. Gas fields are much easier to turn off than oil fields without damaging them. Some gas, but not much, could be rerouted to places such as Central Asia or Turkey. But Russia would probably end up initially putting a lot of gas into storage, but they don't have an awful lot of storage capacity, so they quickly have to start shutting down wells. There's no gas pipeline connection between West Siberia, where Gazprom pumps gas for Europe, and China at present, and building one would take three or four years. Putin may feel that he's hit back at the West by forcing it to pay in rubles, and if push came to shove, Europe might even agree to do this, as in truth it makes almost no real difference. But by forcibly rewriting contracts, Putin would destroy any remaining trust in Moscow as an energy supplier, and Europe's determination to turn its back on Moscow might be here to stay. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Daily Upside, by clicking on the link in the video description below. It's a great newsletter that I can firmly recommend. If you like this video, you should watch the one on the economic effects of Russia's invasion of Ukraine next. Have a great day and talk to you again soon. Bye.